Joining me now, one of the other Republicans who voted to impeach Trump, Congressman Fred Upton of Michigan, who is now retiring at the end of the term. Congressman, thank you so much for joining me. You were just, as I said, one of 10 Republicans who voted in the House to impeach Donald Trump for his actions on and leading up to January 6th. Do you think the case the January 6th committee is presenting is resonating with moderate Republican voters and independents? Yeah, I think so. I think the overriding issue certainly is the economy and gas prices, but I think there's been real interest in what's going on. Uh, you've got, obviously, your different factions that are not going to turn it on and watch. They made their decision some time ago. But, yeah, I, I think that it's had an impact uh, on voters uh, across the country. And we'll see how this thing plays out. Uh, the committee has been very careful not to divulge any details in advance of their hearings. Uh, for me, I've, you know, obviously, I was there that day. Uh, the regrets that I see is that some of the folks that they've talked to uh, who are now, their, their answers are being made public, where have they been for the last year and a half? Uh, why weren't they saying what they're saying now a year and a half ago, uh, particularly to those of us that actually witnessed what was going on uh, to back us up a little bit? Well, conservative judge Michael Ludig testified this week that Donald Trump and his supporters still pose a, quote, clear and present danger to American democracy. Congressman, the former president is actively exploring a 2024 run right now. Is your party going to back him again? Well, I have said from the beginning, I think that Donald Trump is going to be a candidate in 24. Uh, the voters still like him a lot. Uh, we see that uh, certainly in Michigan. Uh, he's had a number of uh, decisive wins uh, where he's endorsed candidates that they've won. Uh, he's had a, f a few losses as well, but he, he certainly entertains a, a majority of the Republican base and will be hard to stop. And, and frankly, as we look at the economy, we look at gas prices, all these different things, uh, folks are not really happy with the Biden administration, which is why he is mired at a level even below where mm. uh, Donald Trump was at this point in, in his uh, tenure. What does it say to you uh, about your party that even after what we have seen over the last week that you say uh, is, is pretty uh, damning, that Republican voters you think still might make him the nominee if he does run? Well, look, it was a close election. It was a close election in 2016. It was certainly a close election in, in 2020 uh, as well. Uh, and you've got the base voters that are really upset that things didn't go their way, mm -hmm. and they're, they're, they're loyal as can be. South, uh, on that note, South Carolina Republican Tom Rice, who, like you, voted to impeach Donald Trump, lost his primary this week. That means that the, of the 10 House Republicans who backed impeachment, half, including yourself, will not be returning to Congress next year. And the remainder are facing some pretty tough reelection battles come January 23. The question is, will there be anyone left in the House Republican Congress uh, conference, sir, willing to stand up to Donald Trump? I think that there will be. I mean, for a couple of us, uh, you know, my district, Michigan lost a congressional seat. So mm -hmm. we went from 14 to 13. So they made my district like a sandwich uh, <laughs> with even Upton Middle School put with Lake Erie. And I can see Lake Michigan from my house. Uh, Adam Kinzinger, they, they diced his district up uh, pretty well uh, uh, also. So, you know, we'll see when these primaries are over. But, I, yeah, I think there'll be some of the 10 that are standing. And you got to remember, too, uh, though there were only 10 of us that voted to impeach, there were 35 of us that voted for a bipartisan commission uh, to look at this. And we know that there were a lot of folks who were, frankly, scared of their reelection, mm. uh, which is why they voted the other way as well. So... Uh, our group is actually a little bit stronger than, than what the numbers showed. And, of course, we did send it to the Senate, and they did have a majority of the senators uh, vote to impeach the, the president. But, you know, we'll, we'll, you know, that's why politics is so, so much fun sometimes. Uh, it's, uh, we'll see how things all shake out. I uh, want to turn to guns. A bipartisan group in the Senate is trying to lock down a compromise deal. But funding for uh, state red flag laws and eliminating the so-called boyfriend loophole do remain sticking points for Republicans. Congress leaves for recess in a week. Do you think a deal is still gettable? I sure hope so. Um, we talked to, so I'm a, a vice chair of the Bipartisan Problem Solvers Caucus. We had a Zoom meeting uh, last week with a, a couple of senators. They brought us up to speed where they were. Frankly, I thought by now we'd 
have the legislative agreement since they agreed in principle uh, a week ago. Uh, the, as you said, the Senate's going to be out as the House will be at the end of this week. I'm hoping that they get close. Uh, those are the two sticking points. And should they get the votes to get it done, uh, I, I think that the House will take it up or immediately when we come back. But haven't had an update in the last 48 hours, but I know that they're getting close. And, you know, it's frankly, it's common sense. Uh, Law-abiding folks uh, shouldn't have any fears in terms of what's, what's going on. Uh, it's, it's been a rallying point, particularly for the NRA and the Gun Owners of America. You look at their website and they're like raising cash like you mm -hmm. wouldn't believe in terms of their Second Amendment rights are being taken away. No, that's not what's happening here. This is some common sense stuff, but it's, it's been elevated for sure, when, particularly when you have some pretty well-respected Republicans, uh, whether it be a, a John Cornyn or a Dan Crenshaw, are literally being accosted at their state conventions in Texas this weekend. Fred Upton, a congressman from Michigan, thank you so much for joining me. Happy, happy Father's Day to you, sir. You bet. Thanks.